three, two, one, and we're live. Hi, everyone. I am here with Danny of the Dutch WTC team. Hi, Danny. Hi. And we are here both to make amends and apologies from me to Danny, but also <laughs> to do a winner's interview because uh, Danny has won not just one tournament this year, but he's won two bold action tournaments in Denmark. And there's a lot of other stuff going on. So, hi, Danny. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> well, thanks for I will, uh, I will just share my screen for a sec because I have made, as I usually do, I've made a PowerPoint. So, um, here we go. Uh, we'll start at the start, I think. Just a sec. Right. Winner's interview with Danny van der Rohl. That's you. And... Yes. Um, just before I do anything else, because last time I messed this up royally, I had uh, interference from Danish into my English. So Danny is from the Netherlands. He lives in Friesland and he is Dutch. Yes, that's correct. <laughs> um, so I messed this up completely last time. Sorry about that, Danny. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. It's a common um, mistake. Uh, and and uh, actually, we were in Friesland down uh, in Tabletopper um, in Danny's shop and, and played. And um, the language was interesting for us Danes to come and, and hear, which I guess is the same for you when, when you come to Denmark. There are certain things that you understand. Yep. Sometimes you even understand the, like, the sentence, but you don't understand the individual yep. words. So... <clears throat> Danish and Dutch is pretty similar in many respects, and I uh, guess Frisian yeah. is is even more. Yeah, yeah. Frisian is more like Danish than Dutch. Even. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there, and and the two countries are pretty close anyway. So yeah, yeah. Uh, there is there is a a very uh, short link between the two languages. Yeah. Right. So Danny, just to introduce yourself, um, you this year you have one Sealand Open, right? Right. You played in the Dutch Nationals and yep. took some medal as well. Yeah, third. Third. Then you played at Bring Your Guns and won that one as well. Correct. So that is your third bold action medal this year. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, that is. At the same time, you're running Tabletopper, which is one of the main distributors of bold action and uh, Flames of War in the EU. Pretty much, we're growing there, and uh, we also got like Victrix and Paris and things like that. Yeah. Yep. So lots of historical stuff. Um, yeah. By the way, I will link in the description if anyone wants to go and check out. Just because awesome. while you're here, we might as well give you some free advertisement. And <laughs> at the same time, you're running the Dutch national team, which has not been very active this year, but but you are like the main guy for that as well. Nah, well, P Pim, Pim is our team captain. Pim is the team captain now, yeah. but but you yeah, two yeah, run he, a very he, tight uh, pair. <laughs> no, no, no. Pim was always the team captain. The captain things are not really my thing, but I am oh. on all the teams. Yeah. Um, most of the time, Martin is with us as well, who won the Dutch Nationals. Yes, Martin is a very good player. Pim did very well at Bring Your Guns as well. So yeah. the Dutch have a really strong like group of uh, international team yeah. players as well. Yeah. And uh, next year you are hosting a pair team championships Correct. as well. Um, could you just tell us a few things about that? Yeah. Well, it's interesting. Uh, we were actually thinking of running the team uh, championships in a very luxurious park. Uh, but we got a lot of feedback uh, because a lot of the um, international players are also going to Spain. Mm. Our tournament had a price tag. Yep. So we actually made the decision this weekend to alter it. Uh, we're still okay. going to do the pair championship yep. on the same date. But we're going to do it in a more cheaper location. Uh, so it will be affordable for everybody who wants to attend. Um, the, the, the previous location we had was on a five-star vacation resort <laughs> with everything you can dream of. 
nice <laughs> but uh, but expensive it, yeah. yeah 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 it was expensive and mm. uh, even even then we had a very good layout for around 300 euros you had three nights of sleep and yeah. dinner and everything yeah. on it but considering spain is just two months before that and yeah. Our hobby costs money, I know, but it does, yeah. a lot of people didn't see or uh, didn't want to come to two expensive tournaments in, in yeah. two or three months. So yeah. Yeah. we got to notch it down. And of course, in September, we're going to host the Dutch Nationals again. And the Dutch Nationals again. But uh, links for at least the team championships will be in the description yeah. as well. Uh, if we don't have anything for the Dutch Nationals yet, do we? Yeah. Yeah, we have a date, but, but I need to find Okay, this. I will write the date in the description as well. Right. And then, on top of all of that, you have been playing Flames of War this year as well. Is that yes. right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I first up, I was invited for the European Championship team. Yep. Because one, one of the guys had a back injury, so and I was there already as a trader. Um, and that didn't go so well. Oh, <laughs> and, uh, I must say it was a it was a very nice experience. It was yeah. in Belgium. It was very nicely done. Yeah, um, I managed to lose all my games. Brilliant! Very nicely done of yeah. you. I think I think your opponents were uh, very happy about that. <laughs> yes, yes. I even played against the Danes. So yeah. And yeah. uh, then I played a tournament in Arnhem with just a few. Uh, I became second. And then I went to Belgium to the Grand Tournament in Belgium and becoming the best Dutchman with the ninth place. Nice. So, so I, going going from being yeah. beaten completely to actually taking some some nice uh, yeah. some nice wins. Yeah, improving the game. <laughs> improving your game in Flames of War. Yeah. That is so brilliant. But today we are talking about bring your yeah. guns. Yeah. And uh, I want to start by by talking to you about the process that you have, because clearly, and I've been talking a little bit about this on my channel, I think that you are bringing back skirmishing Americans into the top placement in Europe because two top top placements, two gold medals and one third place in three international top tournaments uh, we haven't seen that in a while and especially not for americans so when you pick out your nation uh, do you always take americans for bold action or what happens for you well actually um as an owner of a game store everybody says, well you must own like 25 armies well actually yes. i own one army <laughs> <laughs> and that's us so anyone playing against Danny can always be guaranteed that, that they'll face no, your Americans. No, well, actually, not anymore. I have recently acquired a, a duck army, Deutsche Afrika Corps. Yeah, yeah. And an eighth army is on its way. Um, both armies will be painted because I want to have a demo, arm, demo armies for my store. Yeah. But I had them made to an extent that I can play tournaments with them. So, yeah. yeah. But, so... But, Nine Brilliant. out of ten times, I will play Americans. Yes, yes. And that must mean, how long have you been playing Americans by now? Well, um, how old is Bolt Action exactly? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so a lot well, of years by now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I uh, when Bolt Action came out, me and a friend, uh, Boris, uh, we went to a gaming store in Zwolle. Back then, uh, we got a book and uh, he started Germans, I started Americans. Um, and we didn't understand a single thing of bolt action. And we're like, mm. okay, I've been shot three times. I get three pins. Well, this squad is not going to do anything. Yeah. <laughs> so we did. So we, we threw the book in a, in a corner and we didn't play this for like six or 12 months or something. Yeah. <laughs> and then a uh, small community started to build up and we played foe. And well, now we got a um, pretty big community in the Netherlands. Yeah. And uh, this is maybe one of the things that I've been talking about often that I think when you play one nation for quite a while, like I have done with my Brits, you become very, very good at playing that nation and that army build. And that's one of the things that I I find about playing against you that I, I think I've, you are extremely good at knowing what your units can do. Yep. Um, do you often 
build the same army lists um, or or have there been like huge variations in what you've been fielding? Um, yeah, when I started, uh, well, my first international tournament was the first uh, VTC in Poland. Yep. Uh, I had a US Army list, no Marines, uh, but I did bring a Hellcat. <laughs> I had yep. 12 order dice. Ooh, low. And I, and I was second, only one point after Manuel. Yeah. Um, and, and So, uh, so we, just, just listen to that, viewers, just... 12 order dice, he brought a Hellcat, and he came second at the WTC. I don't yeah. know what I'm talking about. Listen to Danny. He knows bold action. I have no idea. Saying that 12 is low, I have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> 12 well, order say, dice, Danny. I'm, yeah, it, it must have something to do with the lucky Dutch. <laughs> <laughs> no, not if it happens that often. It's not just luck then. Right. Um, yeah, so uh, I must say, when I played more international games, uh, yeah. and when, uh, especially when I met you guys, mm -hmm. um, I improved on my order list. So um, do I make the same build? I do tend to take the same core with me because yep. what you say, I know a lot about what these units can do on the tournament. Yeah. Um, and my order dice will around be around 14 to 17 on a thousand point list. Yes. Um, my builds, uh, actually I played a lot of Hellcat in back in the day and only yeah. after facing a few of you guys, I started using stewards. Yeah. Uh, but bring your guns. I brought my Hellcat back. You brought your Hellcat back and you did well with it. I mean, yeah. how many, uh, uh how many units did it kill during that tournament? Do you remember? Well, uh, quite a few actually, and I I faced off some tanks as well. Mm. And uh, but but the main thing with with thing, you need to keep it at at your most backline because the range you have, everything is yeah. a short range. Yeah. You got a good high explosive round in it, and you got a heavy machine gun. Yeah. Um, and that high explosive round, I I felt that when in our game when you t took like one shot and and wiped one unit yeah. of regulars out of my list. Um, so so that two inch template is actually quite uh, destructive. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and and you got seventy two inches of range because yeah. it's a heavy anti tank. So you yeah. have the range. Only yeah. the the thing is made of paper. <laughs> yeah, it really is. It, yeah, if yeah. you got hit, you're you, it, it's done. Um, do you often find that because one of the things that I've been I've been talking a lot of crap about Hellcats, um, maybe especially with with Ryan, the uh, the American player Ryan, who was on their WTC team and who also brings Hellcats to many tournaments, and I've been saying that that uh, well the Hellcat with guilt with will get pinned down because small arms fire will give it pins or whatever. Do you often find that that happens to you? Um, no. no, because you're keeping it so far back, right? Yeah, and um, mostly my infantry will be in front of it. So yeah. most people won't spend their rifle shots at pinning a Hellcat at long yeah. range yeah. Uh, because they have better targets to shoot at. Mm. And only players who play more will see the importance of pinning a Hellcat. Yeah. And I also give it recce, yeah. but I only used it once at Bring Your Guns. Yeah. Yeah, because it, it 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 was not that necessary to use it because most of the time no. you were already in cover you were already sitting on yeah. the back lines yeah. so you just tank whatever shots came your way and and shot back yeah yeah right yeah yeah so it's it's basically a mobile piece of artillery most of the, most of the time for you yeah yeah for me for me yeah. it is and if yeah. i face a heavy tank then i can deal with it yeah. But most of the time, I will use the HE uh, template. Yeah. And and uh, and a heavy machine gun. What are the core units do you take? Because you talked about having like a core of your yeah. army that that you always bring. Yeah. My my for my my core units because I play Americans. Uh, um, uh, walking and shooting doesn't have a penalty. So yeah. normally I bring uh, regular Marines mm -hmm. uh, with no extras except for three BERs. Uh, the and, BR... and, and people notice this. This is one of the things that's really clever about Danny's lists. Three BARs, that is six shots. So at range, yeah. he's pretty likely to get those sixes that ended up pinning me down uh, all yeah. our game. 
No. Um, so so well, that's one of the, the, the key things here, I think, yeah. Yeah, well, actually, it means that your Marines, uh, I never take inexperience. Yeah. Uh, even not with my mortars, only with my uh, multi-launcher. Mm. Um, but uh, the, the BERs, you just walk six inches, you can shoot 30, you got six yeah. shots, so there will be a six, six in every uh, every volley. Yeah. Um, and, and that makes it really good because you can pin them. Yeah. And it's only five points for a weapon. So most of the times I got two units of um, like eight or 10 Marines with BERs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And my go-to unit of veteran engineers. Yeah. Um, I kit those guys up with the flame. So uh, also the BERs because then they can do something on long mm -hmm. range and short range. They got two shots. I yeah. put in submachine guns. Uh, if you have the points. Yeah. Yeah, I have the points, and then I put them in trucks. I put them in dodges with MMGs, or mm. now lately I use the weasel. Yeah, and the weasel is is actually a very very good little little vehicle. It it can't take the pintle mounted, which sucks. But yeah. what it does it right. have that's so great? I mean, it has recce. It has recce. It's it's one <laughs> of the only transports that has recce, and I mean that's just enormously <laughs> beneficial, right? Especially for engineers. Yeah. So I thought yeah, at this well, point, Danny, that that we might actually look at your list again, so that we yeah. can show it to people. This was the list that you brought to bring your guns. So yeah. an inexperienced right. second lieutenant. Yeah. That's, the, yeah. Yeah. The the tax that we're paying, right? And then the marine squads that you're talking about here. Um, yeah. We have a regular marine squad here. You also gave yep. it a few pistols. Why? I I had two I had two points over in the list. Yeah. So yeah. Just, yeah. just gave them the pistols for assault. Yeah. yeah. And then double uh, engineers here, so that you have two of everything that's that's basically good. I remember that that from your uh, seal and open list as well. You had two yeah. of everything, um, which may meant that you had real redundancy in your list, which I think is really really important when you're playing tournaments um, that you have so that you can throw one up and okay I lost that one but I have an extra right yeah I, I can deal with basically anything yeah with you the, can with these squats yeah um, the, only th the only thing I struggle with are real uh, horde lists uh, that's something this list will struggle with yeah but 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 you do have a lot of shots in the list, and I mean, yeah. even if 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 it's an inexperienced horde, you will kill a lot of dudes before they yeah. reach you. Yeah. Um, there we have the regular mortar with a spotter here. Yeah. Uh, the I sniper always team. Take, I yeah. always take that one. I never use the heavy inexperience. I always use the spotter. Yeah. It it will survive much longer. It will, and you won't lose the, the medium mortar to enemy snipers at any point no. because you can just put out the spotter, and if the spotter is, gets killed by an enemy sniper, then your mortar okay. can move uh, and, yep. and start shooting. So yep. it, it does allow you, to, even though it's it's more expensive, it does allow you to, to do a yep. lot more with it. It, um, it survives the games, yeah. Yeah. Regular sniper. I see some people taking veteran snipers. How do you feel about that? Um, uh, 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 to be honest, I feel that sniper teams are um, too expensive for what they do. Uh, even agree. a regular sniper, um, even my snipers had submachine guns. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Should, yeah, but uh, a veteran sniper, no, I would never mm. take that. Uh, I took the regular sniper because this was an 1100 point. Mm. Um, uh, tournament and it 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 is handy for taking out like a machine gun or a mortar yeah. sometimes, but yeah. you rarely got the chance. Mm. Now for so this tournament, you were allowed to take the Peleliu uh, assault squad, which uh, if of course is just an upgraded version. <laughs> it's stupid, I know. Double flamethrowers. It's an upgraded version of the engineers. Yeah. With I mean, you're very very likely to hit with one or both of those yeah. flamethrowers and just yeah. absolutely obliterate anything that you aim it at. Um, uh, a bazooka team. So if you can include one of those Peleliu, do so because I mean. It's just stupidly good. Um, expensive yeah. for a five-man unit, but very good. Yeah, Masuka but team, do you... Sorry, yeah? Yeah, yeah, but but they're a veteran, and, I, and, and I'm going to put them in a weasel. Yeah. 
So they're very unlikely to get pinned on the way. They, or they will get pinned maybe, but yeah. they won't die most of the times. Yeah. And they're in a tracked vehicle, so you can go through forest walls and things like that. It doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. And then the Basuga team. Um, yeah. If I was building Americans, I would always, always bring a Basuga team. Do you always bring a Basuga? Yeah. Yeah. Simply because it's it's basically the the best ranged uh, anti tank I find that we have in the game. That where it's uh, yeah you know you've got the dog teams they're very inex uh, like very very cheap but this yeah. is because you can fire it every single turn. I mean it's just yeah. so good. Yeah. 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 And, and it's a small team. Uh, mm. uh, past days I took them veterans so they mm. would stay longer but regular is just fine. Regular works just as well. Yeah. Just um, find some hard cover, small team, long range, yeah. and you will hit them on sevens. Yeah. And 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 they are a real threat against like anything. Yeah, especially stewards. That five plus against yeah. an eight plus steward, you're very very likely to hurt it. Very likely. Yeah. yeah. And then then we have the uh, the war dog team. Again, a unit I talk a lot of crap about. I don't <laughs> yeah. get the war dog. Yes, I do. I uh, I mean I do get it. It's an 18 points for a, an extra order dice. Yes, I do get yeah. that. But it's just one one veteran dude um, that can spot a little better. Um, you used him, though, very aggressively in our game, yeah. which uh, which was kind of interesting. Um, do you want to explain what you think about this war dog here? Yeah, well, the war dog started in Poland. And then I got him the first time. Well, I, I will show you why I got the war dog. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I've met Wolf. Come, 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 He's brilliant. It's like this is a war dog. That's a war dog. That's a true war. Hi, Wolf. Um, that, so by the way, is, is Wolf is an absolutely sweet dog. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't 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 tell any. In no, no, no. He yeah. believes he's an he's he believes he's a war dog. Yeah. Yeah. They. Um, uh, I take war dog. It's what you say. It's a very cheap order dice. It's just a one-man tough fighter guy with or a rifle or a submachine gun. Or actually, I put a submachine gun on mine. I also mm. got one with a rifle for pins. Yeah. Um, but this guy takes out a lot of small crap. Yeah. I can send this guy to a sniper team, kill it. Yeah. Uh, mortar teams. Uh, I even took uh, artillery pieces with him. <laughs> And if you don't watch out, it, yep. most of the guys, it's, it's just a tough fighter. Yeah, but it does damage and it hits yep. twice most of the times. And and maybe it's because people underestimate him because he's just one guy. I can ignore him for two turns and suddenly he's like, he's six inches from you and he's shooting you twice. And then you're one guy and he charges you and he's a tough fighter and he wins. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I think yeah, he's... So, uh, I, I, I make it a sport uh, to take at least a 50-point unit with him, like a mortar yeah. or an uh, inexperienced artillery piece, mm. something like that. Yeah. And otherwise, if people want to shoot at him to kill it, it means they have to use a, 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 an expensive unit and yeah. whole shooting turn to kill an 18-point yeah. yeah. nice. And yeah. it, it's fine because they wasted the shots. And most of the time, it is veteran. It is a small team. It's a hardcover. So try, yeah. to, try to hit the guy. You might even go down if you decide that that's too dangerous. Yeah. So yeah. they're wasting shots at him. Yeah. 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 Which so is, which I is also brilliant. Yeah. I I agree. It's not the most uh, uh, good uh, unit in the game. I could take a medic, but I find this more fun. Yeah. And if if it's actually useful in your games, if you find that you it can just distract your opponent to shoot at it and, or use him to do stuff, I mean, then then it might yeah. not be super effective, but yeah. it might do the trick. Yeah, and and um, we also play a lot of uh, games on the tournaments with mm. uh, that you need to reach the other side. Well, yeah. take the bazooka, take the inexperienced lieutenant, take this guy, put it in a jeep. Mm. And rush it forward, and they will score you 15 that's a, points. That's a lot of points right there in that one Jeep or Dodge truck, yeah. Yeah, so if you can get it safely to the other side, yeah. that's a massive blow. That is. 
And then you have, of course, had your uh, rocket launcher, the 114 millimeter. I hate those. I hate Danny's multi launchers. <laughs> they we, didn't we, do one. No, they didn't do much at Book. That's right. In our game, they killed like one. They killed my sniper. sniper. Yeah. Um, but uh, in our game in Holland, uh, sorry, in in they Friesland, um, you you uh, we had so many units being hit because we were on that table with. All with the houses. all the buildings everywhere, yeah, um, and you had two multi launchers in that game. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Back then I had two. Now I only have one. Yeah, um, but you will often bring a multi launcher as your artillery piece. No, no, it's it's. Um, uh, I just recently discovered the 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 the, the upside of it, but. Mm. It's 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 a it's a gamble weapon. Uh, a lot it of is. guys call it a no skill weapon. Yeah. On the other hand, it does bring fear. Um, it does. You see with deployment that people are moving away from buildings and things like that. So yeah. you can uh, anticipate on that that they yeah. won't field stuff near the building, so they put it somewhere else. Yeah. So and and that is that is what Danny is talking about here is exactly what I've been telling you guys so many times. The rocket launchers, the multi rocket launchers, they're not a weapon that will win you games necessarily. No. Um, they're, they're a weapon that forces your enemy to deploy in a certain way, and then Danny can exploit that because he's really good at pushing his skirmishes towards one side and just shooting that side of you down. Um, yeah, that's what that's what it does. Yeah. And then you have. Yeah. yeah, sorry, but yeah. if you hit with it, it's just like Warhammer yeah. hit, hitting with your goblin flyer a whole yeah. unit. It's like, yeah. Ooh. yeah. Um, and then, then of course, we'll... there's the Holstron Limber because that's a yeah. cheap order dice. Um, that's it. The Hellcat and the Weasel and your Dodges. So that was your list for um, for bringing yeah. your guns. Right. Correct. So that that was the 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 building a winning list. Let's maybe talk about your games. Your first day at Bring Your Guns, who did you play and, and how did you think it went and what did you think actually decided the games? Let's start with game number one. Can you remember uh, who you played? Yeah, I played David. Yeah. That's what not. Yep. Um, and we played the mission with the confused uh, fighting. Yeah. Oh, so everyone was coming fighting. in from all the sides all the time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And David had brought his, uh, he had brought a barbecue American I'm list. Yeah. yeah, he had. He had actually two weasels as well. Yeah, he did. Um, well, uh, the game, uh, the, the most funny part of the game was that I lost the roll off, but my first hit with my multi launcher was right on his weasel. Um. <laughs> yeah, and, and then a one. Yeah. <laughs> so not, nothing happened. Nothing happened. <laughs> Oh, that uh, will happen so often. You roll that six, and the next one is a one because yeah. apparently it it's out of sixes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, the, um, uh, David stick very uh, to to one side, so I couldn't yeah. uh, come in behind him. Yeah. Uh, but I did use all the sides to come on, and I very. So you rapidly... were basically outflanking him because he stuck yeah. to that one side. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. yeah. So I could get units everywhere I needed them. Yeah. Uh, I could get my flamethrowers with their weasel mm. on the most crucial part of the battle in. Um, I think I killed everything of David except his steward. Wow. Uh, so I, that... I think every, yeah, everything died except the steward. Yeah. So that was oh. a massive victory for you in the first game. Yeah, you the, you, you the, must have been feeling pretty confident going from that game into <laughs> the second game because David is on the Danish WTC team. He's not a nobody, and and that was a hard list that he had brought. I had actually predicted that he would be in the top five as well. Yeah. So so you must have been feeling very good. Uh, well, actually, I never played David, so I didn't have any expectations of okay. um, how good David uh, was. Hmm? Uh, only I knew that he's a great guy. Yeah. And we had a very fun game. Uh, yeah. The mission gave some confusion. Um, yeah. It was a, a and, custom mission for, for Bring Your Guns. It was very confused. Yeah. And we had like the table with like the most scenery you could ever <laughs> dream of. It was the, 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 the table of Jan. Yeah. 
and it was amazingly beautiful. It really was a good table, but there was so much stuff so on much it. So much stuff on it. You couldn't move and, anywhere. And, yeah. And then my flamethrowers came into play. And yeah. well, the, his first weasel flamethrower was pinned. His yeah. second one was shot in the rear and was disabled by my bazooka team that came in. Yeah. Then he faced my Hellcat from the same direction that could finish the job. So yeah. uh, he had some unlucky things happening. Then you went into game number two. Who did Against you play there? Lars. Yeah. Uh, with his Japanese. Yeah. Lars uh, is also I'm... on the Danish WTC team. I know. He is right now captaining Denmark B. Um, so mm. and and he is starting Japanese. He's not an experienced Japanese player. So he usually plays uh, Soviets, but he is starting Japanese and and testing right. them out. So right. how did you do in that game? Right, um, uh, amazing game. Uh, most of the times, I really fear Japanese. Yeah, um, because they they can ignore the flamethrowers. Yeah, yeah. That that's basically that's one of the only armies that can basically say mm, to my flamethrowers. Yeah, and still win the game. Uh, yeah. He had the four inch mortar. He had like all the the good stuff. Um, I think it was round two or three that we came in a, um, in a hefty discussion about me hitting with my Hellcat his truck, mm. carrying an officer, a Kipai officer, uh, oh. anti tank team in a suicide. Oh, oh. ow. Uh, actually, I, I hit it on a six. And um, well, we talked about it because the, the, the ranges of shooting one inch yeah. from fire were really tight. and. Well, we actually decided with the two of us, okay, you can make this shot only on, and I did. Mm. And then and then the judge came in, Jan, and he said, well, you can't do this. So we, I took five order dice of him, but we had to bring it all you back. You had to so redo it, okay. We had to redo it, but uh, that was the last shot of round two or three, I don't know. But yeah. I had the first dice of the next round, and then my dual flamethrower guys could get in range of the truck and i just burned down the truck with everybody inside yeah that's um, that's bad because once that happens he's down like the truck five. the camp yeah. side the the, the suicide the officer and what was the last one uh, uh an anti-tank rifle team anti-tank rifle five order eyes down that yeah. is difficult to come back from even yeah, for a japanese that... army that can ignore flamethrowers yeah, and I just sacrificed my Marines, uh, yeah. my, my assault Marines. I mean, 100 points for five order dice is a fair trade-off. That is a very fair trade-off, yeah. Yeah. So so that was a victory as well. Yeah. And yeah. that brought you to game number three, the final one on the first day. Yeah. I fought against Christian. Yeah. And, and I Christian, my... uh, again, by the way, he was one of the guys I had predicted would end up in the top. He no, is no, no, the... Christian with the British Airborne. Ah, uh, yep, yep. But he, I had predicted he would end in the top. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. He and is he, an he... experienced Danish uh, yeah. tournament player, but maybe not like the top level because he doesn't really go to international tournaments yet. No, um, he, he is a Flames of War player. In he's, a, he's a really good Flames of War player, though. He yeah. is a really good Flames of War player. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. and he, he won the painting competition. His army is always yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So, yes. so you were playing against Brits here. And uh, do you remember the mission? Um, yeah, that was with the three, um, with the three objectives on the middle line. Yeah. I believe. Yeah, it was a three objectives. And yeah. it, uh, it, it was the most tough game I fought. Uh, yeah. I uh, my final battle on Sealand Open was also against Christian. Yeah. And I I won it by this much. Well, this yeah. time actually on order dice I lost, but on scenario I won. Mm. Uh, he had six order dice from me. I got four of him. So on yeah. order dice count he won, but I had yeah. one objective more than him. Uh, that was a really really tough battle. Yeah. Um, especially because most of his, he had uh, paratroopers, right? So his yeah. his units were stubborn, which also is really good against flamethrowers. So your yeah. flamethrowers were less effective, and and he had a lot of tools in his list. He had, uh, I must say, he took the Crusader AA, uh, who got in a standoff with a Hellcat. Mm -hmm. 
that didn't fare well for him. <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, I, I imagine the Hellcat finished it off quite quickly. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, actually, I needed three shots for that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, yeah, well. <laughs> but but um, the, the stubborn units he, he took were all small. Yeah. So uh, he took like five or six guys in a, in a stubborn unit. So if they got hit by a flamethrower, most of the time, more than half of the unit died anyway. Yeah, so they, uh, they were less effective once they... They yeah. were, yeah. 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 And he had, of course, his 25 pounder. And that gave me a lot of headaches. Yeah. The 25 um, pounder he, is just such a good gun. Yeah. Really, and he really. had a, his sniper was positioned very well, um, who shot an awful lot of hits. Mm. Um, so he had a very good deployment. Um, my multi launcher didn't do anything, he killed it no. very quickly. Mm. Um, he identified the threats and um, yeah. he gave me a run for my money and that, um, I was glad round six was an end yeah. I think if, uh, if a round seven would come he might have pulled it out yeah yeah uh, I think so that's brilliant I mean having so close games and that would bring you at the top uh, for day one so you had three yeah. victories and all yeah. of them against good players, which again really shows the strength of schedule here for Danny was very, very high. It actually ended up you not having the, the largest strength of schedule, but almost, I think you were the second highest strength of schedule. Um, the only one yeah. who had a stronger st strength of schedule was uh, um, Michael Fee, who came second. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah. so really strong first day here and yeah. then of course we came into day two and our game oh yeah. man i am still sore about this game <laughs> anyways <laughs> no it, i think uh on reflection our game was very much decided by by my inexperience with my own list and by your just you using your list to the maximum of your ability um, what do you think about our game? What do you think decided our game? Well, actually, um, you always um, uh, you do you do a lot of preparation, like printing out everything, uh, having yeah, yeah, the scenarios yeah. ready. Um, I, as you know, I don't do death. No, at all. Not, a, I, not as I, much. <laughs> I, just, I just show up and throw some dice, and I see yeah. where it goes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but the evening on Saturday evening, we had a very pleasant evening with uh, with Jan and a few of the new guys, and yeah. uh, we talked about the scenario because uh, Patrick and our uh, one of the Dutch guys didn't understand some things. Mm. So Jan started explaining, and then Jan made uh, well the other one needs to be 18 inch apart from the other, but it doesn't say it can't be at the side, and I was like. Ooh. Then both objectives are very close together, and I can defend that more easily than mm -hmm. pulling them apart. And uh, I knew I had to face you. Yeah. And ba basically, um, basically, just for context, I was doing the same preparation. I was sitting at home uh, doing exactly what Danny was doing here. I also read the mission and said, okay, they have to be 18 inches apart. If I get the first pick, I know exactly where I want to place this because I can then decide where the second objective is as well so so we were both thinking exactly the same thing here yeah so and actually i that was the only role of an entire tournament that i won from you <laughs> with, with a lucky six I yep. did. Uh, but you ma didn't make it hard throwing a one so yeah yeah so and, and when I saw the table, as you can see it here, uh, yeah. I decided to put uh, the objective in the upper uh, middle because there was uh, up here, there, yeah. yeah, because there was a uh, hard ground around it. Yeah, um, there was so this my... uh, this lake. We had decided the yeah. lakes were rough ground and yeah. soft cover for infantry, which was perfect placement for your outflankers that came in yeah. later, your engineers and your marines to push up as well. There, there was this hard cover tank yeah. traps here so you could push up in two places so really great placement of that objective also because it meant that the second objective was right here yeah right next to this area terrain uh no, yeah. linear obstacle here yeah yeah and i could defend that very easily yeah um i used my weasel for outflanking because he can cross the rough ground i didn't yeah. outflank my jeeps 
because I because they couldn't get in there. Mm. Uh, so I just so, had so most of the uh, most of Danny's uh, dodges came up here and yeah. then pulled into this area, and then the the weasel came in here as well. So everything was basically pulling into this area and just yeah. dumping bunches of veterans and regulars onto the objective. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, that's what I did. Um, and of course, you had your bombs. Yeah. <laughs> and and this is where my dog team came in. It was like, okay, it was, uh, it was so handy. It was so handy for those bombs. Uh, for those of you who don't know, partisans can place three bombs, which I of course placed around the objectives. I, I was always going to do that. And and then you roll off once you get to them, and they're pretty unlikely. But if they hit, they they really mess you up. Yeah. So so what you typically do, and what Danny did brilliantly was he ran his dog, his war dog through the bombs, yeah. just trying to to spring them, see if they hit. And because it was very inexpensive, eighteen points to remove the the the, the bombs, perfect. Yeah. Well, actually, the the most upper one I removed my bazooka team because I yeah. didn't have any targets yeah. to shoot at. Yeah, because the dog team couldn't reach it, but, but yeah, the dog team cleared the other had, objective. Yeah. yeah, and my lieutenant had a full bar. He was like, "I'm not gonna do this. No, no, this is dangerous." Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, and then and then I think what what broke the battle for you is you 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 pulled all the troops behind the forest. There, you had uh, yeah. the inexperienced yeah. squad. Um, I pulled three I... Uh, three units, uh, uh, the inexperienced pistoleros I had, yeah. a regular unit with a Panzerfaust, and then a truck full of veterans with SMGs, hoping, yes. of course, that I would get to fling up the, the, the truck onto this hardcover and then sit there and then shoot both objectives or be on one or both of them uh, yeah. with the veterans. Um, and Danny saw this, of course. So... So as soon as he brought you brought in your reserves and started just shooting, getting those sixes yeah. because of long range uh, soft cover, mm -hmm. and I had stupidly enough again showing my inexperience with the list. I hadn't moved it all the way up. I had no. I had placed the the uh, truck in like yeah. this angle I, I, uh, instead yeah. of instead of turning it in this angle. So yeah, he could I, get I, and I I really used that. Uh, I could yeah. I, I shot three pins on the truck. Yeah, I I ignored the pistoliers because I knew my flamethrowers will come in in yep. one blow and they were gone. Yeah, and luckily for me, the uh, the ten regulars were hit by my Hellcat with a HC shell. And they were yep. really packed behind, so yep. I, I hit like eight of nine guys of them yep. with with small templates. Yeah, the only thing. Um, that was really hard for me. Was the cavalry? I don't yeah. in the Netherlands. You don't see cavalry a lot. No, no, and that was also a new thing for me. I, I had, I have been experimenting with cavalry, and especially for these, for this partisan list, um, I wanted to start trying out cavalry because I've seen Michael Fee use his Polish to great effect. So I, I was like, I, I'll try this. And what I did against Danny here was I, I basically pushed them against, uh, against his flank. Uh, where yeah. you had pulled up a, a unit of uh, marines here in this uh, crater and a sniper engineers. and then the engineers that's right yeah, a sniper and a, and a hellcat um, yeah. and I, I tried to to rush past you and and into the center but it was too late at that point because my yeah. my my infantry base was just gone um, so the cavalry did well but but it wasn't they enough did. yeah it, they, it was definitely not yeah and they died they died. They died hard, oh. but they they died gloriously, charging and killing <laughs> that Hellcat. <laughs> I must say, yeah, I, yeah. But them, them, there were uh, when they took the Hellcat, yeah. they were done for. The other guys on the other side, and I think, if I may say, you were very cautious. Yeah. Um, I had a shot on two guys, and you uh, wrecked them away. So the yeah. order dies was already gone. Yeah. You were so cautious with the guys yeah. that, all right, I couldn't get a shot, but they weren't the threat. Yeah. Only the group in the middle that took the Hellcat yeah. did something. Yeah. And and I think that is, is part of my inexperience with the list. Um, yeah. I think I, I made the choices both in deployment of the list, where I deployed, yeah. and and in how I used it that were not optimized for for the mission and and for the uh for the terrain as well so so i think no. my inexperience really shows here um, um 
I'm only one one side note to make. The thing you do with cautious, that's what's all. That's that's you do that a lot. Uh, yep. We played, of course, yep. on the Dutch nationals, yep. and I all yep. I said it to you then. Yep. You could have won that game easily if you pushed your Gurkhas and you are saving your Gurkhas. Yeah. But if you had pushed it, I I wouldn't have a stand chance. But now I got yeah. a draw of a lucky six six shot. Yeah. Um, it's it's a it's a thing that's been I I I think I by nature I started out being a a much more pushy player I started being much more aggressive but I have have taught myself not to be so uh, because in many games not being overly aggressive is actually what wins me the game whereas yeah, I, I, overly I totally... aggressive players will lose games but that of course sometimes means that. I am too cautious uh, yeah. and and don't push when I should. So maybe one of my biggest flaws was uh, cleverly exploited by you here. Um, <laughs> but it was it was a brilliant game, and it uh, for me it it really showed the uh, not only the tactical skill but also the strength of skirmishing Americans because they could really mess up your army, delivering pins and then the counter punch with the flamethrowers. Um, I was very impressed by what your list build could do in this setting um, to an army because there was very little I could do to come back and and push up those uh, objectives. So um, a, a really good game and a very yeah. good learning experience as well. Yeah, and 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 the best part of the game was, of course, your sniper running to the objective. <laughs> yeah. Get, getting hit in the field by a multi launcher. <laughs> yeah, my sniper was was down here, sitting here, and and just trying to like pin down his Hellcat and shoot a little yeah. bit at the Marines at the at the the, the spotter for the uh, the, uh, motor. the medium motor, and then at the end, I I ran him out, and his. Uh, a multi launcher way up here took a shot. It was the only he, he, he could only see the sniper. Yeah. Took the shot. He couldn't Boom, see anything, six. The entire battle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah I didn't fun. give I didn't give that multi launcher many shots. Um, no, I think again no, maybe being overly cautious. Having played against double multi launchers in yeah. in Danny's hands before does teach you something about not liking multi launchers. <laughs> I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and, yeah. So the, the the game was, I I think in my opinion, one on uh, the piece of deployment. Yeah. It was in my advantage because yeah. if you would deploy, you you would put them in the middle. Or I more would. In the middle. Uh, I would have placed the first objective here, which yeah. means that the second one would have to go here, which means yeah. that everyone would have hard cover, which would have benefited uh, charges, um, yeah. which is my army. So yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, that, that it, it was a great game. Uh, um, um, there were some mistakes made, uh, uh, but, but but yeah, but, but it does teach you something that preparation with preparation you can you can really swing the favor in your direction, right? Like you you get your chances are increased if you prepare and if you yeah. know what the the mission is. Um, yeah. So prep, it, it, ladies and gentlemen, prep. <laughs> to a small extent, not like to a both small extent. entire books. <laughs> just, just read the mission at least. Read the mission. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Read the mission and know what to do. Yeah, yeah. And then you came to the finals. You yeah. were on a table against a a, a non-tournament player who had done exceedingly well, sir. Yeah. So. Uh, we were all extremely impressed by him, although I think that Michael Fee was very sad that he didn't get to face you in the finals yeah. because he really I was wanted very that. Happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> then he had to beat me instead, which he did massively. He just ran through me. Um, so, But you had to face Soren, and it was on this table, I think. Yeah, it was. At this, this table, I faced Soren. Uh, Soren played on the left, I on the right. Yep. Uh, was also uh, with with very crazy objectives. If you got the objective, your unit got a down, mm -hmm. a bonus for getting hit. Yep. Um, it was way over the top, but it, it was funny. Yep. Uh, we had an objective in the middle, uh, one past the two houses at the, and one in the cornfield. Um, mm. I, I used my outflankers, uh, and 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 winning of Soren was. 
It was actually harder than I thought. Mm -hmm. uh, the guy, the guy throws more sixes than me. <laughs> Which is what you need to do to end up on those tables <laughs> with with the. I mean, Søren hasn't been to many tournaments in Denmark, no. so so no. without tournament experience and ending up on the finals, yeah. you have to be good, you have to be lucky, and you have to know what you're doing. Yeah, and he and he did. Uh, yeah. it was not only the sixes. Yeah, it was also he played well. He placed his units well. Uh, he had a few. Um, you could tell, or he is watching your videos. Mm. Um, he had the right units. He had the right amounts. He had mm -hmm. the special troops. He had. He did very well, but he is also an. Uh, he told me an experienced uh, 40k player. He is who did yeah. tournaments. Yeah. So, so he he's knows. done tournaments in other uh, games. Do you think that actually yeah. helps having yeah, like so. cross reference uh, for for yeah. for yeah? Yeah, I I think so. Uh, if you play tournaments, I play um, uh, back in the days. I played a lot of uh, tournaments on uh, Warhammer Fantasy, mm. like dozens of them. Yeah. Uh, only one army again, only high elves, and yeah. I knew exactly what every unit could do. Yeah. Um, it's the same with this. Uh, and, and I think it will help you if you play a lot of tournaments, just like Flames of War, it will give you a sense of the atmosphere, how to react, yeah. just overthink, uh, not be too aggressive, but don't. But aggressive out. enough, don't be too timid. Uh, yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. So, and, um, and, and, and this tournament, it was, I must say, like no other, the, the atmosphere was just great, the rules... Yeah. Some of the um, missions were a little bit silly. <laughs> uh, but that's that's Jan. He loves silly missions. <laughs> yeah, and and, and 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 to a good extent, they were not yeah. OP or so. It was no. it was it was fine. Yeah. Um, but uh, Soren lost the objective in the down corner uh, mm. uh, with the fields because I got my Hellcat, I got my engineers, uh, and they just started uh, just breaking down the entire. Uh, flank of him, and on the yeah. other side, I had two units with flamethrowers in the ruins, in the buildings. He Up occupied here, yeah. actually the He actually occupied that building, mm. and then I just, I just start burning away. Mm. Yeah. So that, that that cost him the match. Yeah. Uh, but Soren is one to watch for. I really I think so. I if he goes through with this, and he will go from international tournaments. I think this guy can be big. Yeah, he could. I really think. Yeah, he really could. I, I, I at least gave him a little notch and saying, uh, if you want to do stuff with this, uh, I think uh, you could, with a little bit of training, and uh, you could really do well. Yeah. Um, but we'll see. It's not for everyone. The, no. uh, the, the life of the international bolt action stars that we are, Danny. It is not wow. something for everyone. It's it's a special lifestyle, and of course, the wives will miss us terribly, and all of that. <laughs> oh, that's it, Danny. Thank you so much for coming onto this channel and and saying hi. Thank you so much for having me interview you. And again, I apologize apologize for the Friesland Netherland Dutch thingy. Um, by the way, for all you listeners. Um, Holland is the part of one around Amsterdam, right? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, and and, and, and Rotterdam. And, and Rotterdam, yeah. Yeah, right. that's that's north and south Holland. And they're yeah. a part of the Netherlands, just as Friesland is it's a province. Part of the Netherlands. It's a province yeah. in the Netherlands. Exactly. Yeah. And and we're called Dutch. And you're called Dutch. <laughs> Even though you don't actually speak Dutch. Well, you do speak Dutch, don't yeah, you? I do I do yeah. speak normal Dutch. I can yeah. do a little bit of Frisian, but it's yeah. not my, my native language. But I can understand it. So that's why I can follow most of the Danish conversations with ease. With ease, right. That was it, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, Danny, do you have any final words that you want to say? Or should we just say, come to the doubles tournament in Friesland? Yeah, well, that. And um, I hope to see you guys all soon, and uh, maybe on a tournament. Uh, it's, 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 it's lovely. It is just lovely. Just go there. Just go, go and, and play tournaments. See your friends, basically. That's, that's yeah, part yeah, of the, the best the, thing the about most... this hobby. 
Yeah. It, 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 and that's maybe something you need. To, in, in the Netherlands, if I call it a tournament, people are like, oh, tournament, 40K, uh, we don't want to go, uh, yeah. OP, flamethrowers, things like that. But actually, all the tournaments I go, I, I love to go to the Denmark tournaments. Uh, it, it's not all like that. And of course, lists are that, but the player behind the list is much more important. And yeah. I must say, I, I talked about it with Pim on the way back. If I had lost all my games in Denmark, I still you had still a great have, weekend. You still, that is great. That is yeah. good to hear. Danny, I look forward to yeah. seeing you again. And uh, I hope that I win our next match. But uh, let's see what happens. <laughs> You'll get your chance. That was it. Right. Cheers. Oh, thank you all. Bye.